Hey, hey everybody, time for another video. Today I am going to work on fixing up this cover. It's pretty beat up and I had mentioned when I was choosing the books that I would do some things to doctor it up. Originally I had thought I would just use the pages, but looking at the cover, it's just really sweet. It does have some condition issues such as this. <laughs> And I noticed there's a little spot back here, but we're gonna work on the outside of the journal today on the cover part. And then once I have worked on that, I also would like to do some Mod Podging on these bags. These are not glassine. I looked for glassine bags and I don't have them in the right size for these journals. The ones I have are a little too big. So these are a pretty close comparison, but I'm wanting some of these. Uh, ready to go so I can use them in my other journals. Then at the end, we're going to finish up with some more reading. I hope you guys are enjoying that. Looks like we're almost halfway through the story, so that's good. I was getting concerned that we might not actually ever finish. <laughs> All right, so we have a lot to do. I am squeezing this in before I take my doggie to the groomer today. She definitely needs a groom, and um, she's going to look and smell a whole lot better when we're done. <laughs> Okay, so let's get cracking, and I will meet you here at the craft table right after this. Yeah, so little dog has a visit to the groomer today, and I've got kind of a busy week. You know, sometimes when you kind of just go through the cycle of life, all the appointments land in the same week. So she's getting groomed, I'm getting my hair done. And then this Friday night is our monthly crafty get together again at church. So I'll be, I'll be there managing that. But yeah, it's gonna be a good week and the next week, surprise, already Thanksgiving. So life is just moving along with the speed of light. Okay, so. Let's first take a look at this one. I've been working on getting these signatures squared away for each book. Now normally what I usually do is cut the two sides of the cover off before I start trying to make it all pretty and nice. But today I'm just leaving it together, I think for ease of, of um, just keeping all the pieces in the same place. I'm just gonna leave those parts together leave the spine attaching the front and the back and then I will um, it'll just help me keep everything together and then I'll cut it off cut these two pieces apart when I get ready to sew in the signature now some little sweet pea decided to write on the back of their book and I think what I'm doing right now is just taking kind of a wet paper towel it's not kind of wet it is wet I'm taking a wet paper towel <laughs> and wiping it off. Obviously the ink isn't gonna come off, but I'm wondering if I would like to cover that with something. And I think maybe I would, because now's the time. I'm gonna go ahead and clean off this one while I'm here, because I noticed it had something on it. And as long as I have the rag out, might as well, might as well give it a good wipe down. This journal is coming along. I just really am enjoying putting this one together. It just has such a different, just a different look, you know? And I think on this one, I'm gonna try to use more natural elements like burlap and twine and wood and stuff like that so that it, it has kind of more of that natural earthy element that ties in with this stable scene here. So, okay, that one is washed. This one, didn't really need a lot. And I don't have the, the littlest angel over here or I would wipe it down too. This one's pretty clean, so we're, doing, we're in good shape with that one. Okay, so let's set that out of the way. Oh, and then I found my Jingle Bells book. So I think this one I'm gonna just make into a little ring bound because when I took apart the pages, they were not sewn together. They're all just glued in and so I would have to make hinges to attach all the pages to each other before I could sew them in. And I do enjoy doing a nice little uh, one with the book rings, you know, the open and close. Those are always fun to do. So I think that's what this one's gonna be. And since it's from scraps and things, I think that will be perfectly, perfectly fine. But I've been cutting up some of the, some of the cutoffs and scraps that I have. 
to do that with. Okay, so now everybody's had a nice wash, so I'm gonna move on. So what I plan to do on the inside here is add pockets to cover. This will probably be more like a library pocket kind of shape. Sometimes I run them across in a band all the way across, but these are just small. So this one may just end up with, I don't know, like a little collage or something there. I'm not sure yet, but I know I'll put a pocket here to cover up that rip. But on this side, we definitely want to do something to fix that. And what I'm thinking is one of these images here. And the reason for that is I had put this in one of the signatures and then I changed some pages around. And I didn't like that when I had to trim it down, I lost part of the music, but I still really like the images. So I think one of these will be the perfect thing. And I'm not sure, should I do the single angel with the candle and the animals? Cause see, she's got the bunnies and the sheep here. Or should I do the two angels and Jesus? I think I'm gonna go with this one because I think the picture ties in very nicely with this. And it also has a part of the verse from Away in the Manger, so we'll see how much of that actually fits onto the page. I'm just gonna use my Deckle Edge ruler. And give it a rip. Okay, so. Let me tear the top first so I know exactly where that's going to wind up and then I can measure the length a little bit easier in my off screen probably. My, um, my little mat and my camera are set up a little bit further away from me. So if I pull it close to me where I can see a little better and work a little better, it's out of screen for you, out of the, out of the shot. Okay, so I think right above the number six will be perfect. And to give it a little definition, we're gonna ink it. I am very excited. Well, maybe we'll ink it. <laughs> I'm very excited to be using my walnut stain. This is the walnut stain color because it was so dry and I uh, went and inked it up some more. I didn't have any reinker. Lately, I, um, when I buy a color that I know I'm gonna use a lot, I just go ahead and buy the re-inker, the um, refill, you know, that you put on the pad to ink it up. Because it's about the same price as a new pad, but you can get five or six refills. So really, you're getting like six or seven ink pads for the price of two, so it's just nice to know that, that you can keep using it, you know? You don't always have to buy a new one. And then at a certain point, they, they need to be replaced. Now there are some in this world who don't like all that white. And while I don't usually care, I don't mind a little bit of white and bright, I think because this, the colors on here are more toned down, I am just gonna go over it a little bit. I don't want my angel to have a dirty face though. That would just be messed up. <laughs> yeah, there we go. And then it's just, it doesn't, it's not so stark against the blue background. I don't like this happening right there. I'll have to figure out something for that. Um, well, what I could do is just grab a piece of music. I want this for the other page, for the other, those glassine bags, but I think it's so dirty, it's so great. Um, I think I could just take a little piece here. Make sure it's right side up. And I could just lay that under there to give it the idea of some music. There we go. Now, the thing about the Distress Ink, if you'll recall, is that it is made to activate with water and spread around when it gets wet. So when I start putting on the Mod Podge, it's gonna get wet. And I'm gonna move this closer to me and adjust my camera so we can all see better. How's that? Much better, okay. Okay, 
yeah, so that's that's what we're gonna do there. I don't have, oh yes I do. I'm just trying to look for my glue. Here it is. Okay, so I'm gonna lay down this piece first. This is all just paper and cardboard. I think when I first started realizing that these books were made out of just everyday materials, it was kind of a nice little game changer for me. <laughs> so I'm just gonna lay this down with some basic glue. You could use your Mod Podge glue. You can use just any old glue. You could use a glue stick, as long as your cover's clean. If your cover is too shiny, if it's got a real glossy surface, you're gonna wanna rough it up first before you glue anything to it so that it, um, it grabs. Just like when you're painting your house and you have to prime the surface or when you're painting your nails and you have to, you have to kind of um, scruff them up, you know, scuff them up before you apply the polish. It's the same principle. But this one is not super shiny, so there we go. And I would like it to come over, let's see, a little bit more. There we go. Okay, now, the next thing I wanna do before I, before I do any kind of sealing or anything is um, I want to go around this with some gold paint and you all, if you've been watching me for any length of time, know that my last bit of gold paint, the cap broke on it, and so when I would shake it up, it would it would kind of go everywhere. So I finally threw it out. It dried up completely, and I threw it out, and I got myself a new one. This one I got at Hobby Lobby, the metallic craft paint. No special magic, just pick a color you like. There's all kinds of shades of gold. And what we're gonna do is go around and cover up some of these scuffed up edges. Usually I use my finger, but today I'm gonna to use this Q-tip because it works really well. And we're just gonna go around and cover up the scuff marks where it's all worn on the edges. And I like this because I always like adding gold around the edges, especially at Christmas. <laughs> also, if you've been watching me for any length of time, you know I like to do that, so. That's how we're gonna hide that. I mean, I suppose I could make it all really pretty and nice and neat, but I'm kind of a fan of the scruffed up look. Now, um, this side isn't gonna matter because it's gonna end up getting covered with fabric or whatever when I, when I make the spine, so it doesn't really need, doesn't need gold over there. I also need to be careful not to get this on my good shirt. Because I am not wearing crafty clothes right now. I'm wearing go be seen in public clothes. <laughs> While the dog is at the groomer, I'm gonna, um, I wanna put a little gold on here to just kinda cover up those edges a little bit, blend them in. A little gold on her wings. Uh, while the dog's at the groomer, I'm gonna go to the bank and couple other things. So, gotta wear clothing that is appropriate to be seen in public. I, um, I don't, boy, once I came home from my trip, for whatever reason, and this was not anything I was planning on doing, I just kinda did it. But I've <laughs> gone through my closet and organized my clothes and stuff, and um, you know how just every few years things start looking shabby and you've got to reassess, so I, I've moved all the ones that probably shouldn't be seen in public anymore, but are still decent clothes, you know, to one section of my closet for wear around the house. <laughs> Good enough for home, but not for public viewing. And then um, pared down, you know, what is still in good shape and stuff for wearing out. And then I have, I have them divided into the warm weather clothes and the cold weather clothes. So then I made myself a list of what it is I need, you know? So I can be appropriate. I like this little 
rainbow arch. I guess it's not really a rainbow, but it's just kind of the archway into the staple, but I like that. So we're gonna highlight that, accentuate it, with my little angel. I should be using, I think when I put on the Mod Podge, I'm gonna use the Sparkle Mod Podge. And while we're accentuating things, let's do our harp. I'm just touching it very lightly with the tip of this tip of this little pointy Q-tip. They're makeup applicators from Dollar Tree or Walmart or somewhere long ago. I bought them ages ago to apply the chalks with because of the pointy tips. And, um, but they work really well for this too. And then my hands stay clean. Okay, so there is that. And I'm gonna set this one aside for a second. And then I want to go ahead and add gold to the brown one, to the brown cover. I take off my jacket because I'm getting hot already. Still has a little bit of water on it. There we go. And then if I decide to add to the inside, I'm going to have to wait till the Backside is dry before I can go do that, but I might. I just might do that. So we'll do this really quick. So what are you guys doing? I know last year at this time, I asked you all for three things you were thankful for, and that was really, really fun. I learned a few things about you guys, and that was nice. So what are you guys gonna do for Thanksgiving? What are, what are three things you can name that you're thankful for this year? I know I said I wasn't gonna go along that edge, so I don't know why I'm doing it. <laughs> Silly me. Oh, let's see, that looks like it came off. Yeah, put in your comments down below three things you are thankful for this year. And they can, you know, there's no right or wrong. It's things that are important to you. And nobody else can be the judge of what is or is not important to you. So, no shame here. We don't always have to agree, but we should not be making each other feel <laughs> embarrassed or feel bad about, about our own preferences and decisions and things. Okay. I don't like that that's not, see, I probably should have roughed that up. The other one took the paint really well because it was already all scuffed up. This one's not as, um, not as beat up, so the paint is just sliding around on top, but maybe. I just get it nice and thick. Maybe, nope, not working. I might have to employ, employ my hands now. Ah, there, that's better. I think I just got paint on my arm. Oh yeah, there we go. Yep, this one I needed to get in and get grubby. <laughs> That's what I wanted. Okie doke. Now I brought over my um, heat tool so I can give these a quick drying off. So. I keep wanting to put it on the straw, but I just don't think that's gonna look quite right. Then it won't look like natural straw, so I won't do that. But now I'll get the paint off me, off my arm. I've got a wet towel and a dry towel, so super handy, super helpful. Okay, this guy needs to sit over here now. He can just air dry because we're not going to worry about him anymore on camera. Ah, got more paint on me. Well, you know what? Since I do like how that looked, <laughs> I think I am going to. So I guess the moral of the story is just use your fingers. Get in there. Get after it. 
Don't be afraid to get messy. Just don't rub your face when you have paint on your fingers. Okay, that's better. So I think the back cover was okay. It's just the front cover was needing a little extra love. Okay, now wash again. It's amazing, look, I did not use this finger and yet it has paint on it. How does this happen? Uh-oh, oh. Ah. Okay, I'm gonna use my heat tool really fast and then I will be right back. Okay, there's that done. Somehow I still have gold all over me. Crazy. All right, now I am noticing this part right here, kind of just showing, peeking around from behind. But when I cut my cover and I cover it with some fabric, that's gonna go away, okay? So that's gonna get covered up with trim or fabric or whatever, not gonna worry about it. I see a couple edges peeling up because the heat gun made them, made the, made the paper curl. And, uh, so there's that. I'll just tack them back down because if it's not tacked down before I Mod Podge it, who knows what will happen. Okay, good. I like it. I like it. I like it. Now I am going to use my Sparkle Mod Podge. This one's really pretty. It's the Sparkle and this one is the Mod Podge brand, but because the sparkle can get, this is kind of tacky, and the sparkle can get a little bit out of hand. I'm going to also, ah! Wow, that is really watery. I'm also going to blend it with some regular, but the regular, oh, <laughs> how to spill all over your table while you're doing a, doing a video. Uh, the regular, my plain matte, finish Mod Podge is actually my homemade one. So I hope these two blend. I'm not a chemist, but um, which is very obvious because I learned once upon a time by accident when I tried to combine several glue bottles <laughs> into one <laughs> that all the different glues interact with one another and they didn't like each other. And I had big globs of glue Okay, I'm just making a big old mess over here. This is really watery. Why is this so watery? I need to do a wipe up job, hold on. Okay, well, I wasn't gonna go out with gold on me, but um, I am going to apparently go out with glitter all over me. I don't know if you guys could see that or not. Okay, I'm going to mix the sparkle with the matte, hope that they don't have a negative reaction with one another, that they get along, because I am not a chemist. And then, we're just going to seal the book cover. Now, the other way you could do this, and I did debate about this, but I didn't feel like going out into the garage and getting out, finding a box and all that, but you could use a spray finish, like a sealer, you know? A spray acrylic or something, and you can get it in a matte finish or a glossy, whatever you like. I personally do not like glossy, that's just me. I like a nice matte finish, and so I tend to go for that. Now we'll see how many sparkles we get when this thing dries. Oh yeah, okay. So I always go for the matte finish, but you can pick whatever kind you want, you know? And you could just go out and spray it and do it all at once. And then it also helps with um, paper uh, so that it doesn't curl up and stuff. But today, this is how I typically do it, so I thought I would show you the way I usually do it. In my video, gosh, it's been almost, has it been two years ago, or was that last year, when I did the, um, the Vintage Ladies Ephemera Binder for the giveaway? I think that was last year. And I was showing you how I made it. You can see me in that video, which I will link above in the cards that way. Link above in the cards at the end. I can link it down in the description if I remember. Um, I, I use the spray spray sealer. Well, I use spray adhesive, but then I go back at the end and I, I seal it with a spray, spray sealer. Okay, so this little guy needs to dry. 
and I'll have to come back at the end and show you how he turns out. I should bring this up here before I take it away and show you. If you can see, I don't know what you can and can't see from your angle. You can kind of see the sparkle, kind of see where it's wet all over. So I think that did exactly what I wanted it to do because that Sparkle Mod Podge has a lot of sparkle in it and I just want just, you know, a little bit. I don't want to douse it in sparkles. Okay, so now we're gonna go on to the next thing. And I was watching videos just randomly watching through my watch later uh, list and then trying to get um, ideas just seeing what people have done for Christmas in the past and so this one is um, what I'm doing is basically copying what Rhonda Winstead at Rhonda without an H she did this a couple years ago in one of her Christmas videos so I'm gonna kind of I'm gonna basically take her technique and do it here really quick and I'm making these three bags because I would like a sack in each, each um, journal. And then I had the really big one that Celeste sent me. And I, that one's going to go in the Littlest Angel. So to mimic, I wanted three. Um, I wanted to make some to go in the other three journals. So with that in mind, I've got my napkins here. And I want one with kind of a blue tint to it because two of these are blue on the front. And I think this one's gonna go in this one, the Christmas story. But I really like this napkin with the ornaments. And you can use your water pen, pen and, you know, go around this with water. I could do that with a Q-tip too, but I don't have any water handy. Um, kind of outline it and tear it. That's a nice handy way or because I tend to just want to get after it, I just <laughs> dive right in and start tearing. <laughs> I think the pattern on this is the same on all four panels. So no matter which way I do it, it doesn't matter which one I tear up, it'll be fine. And then I want to go around this a bit. This looks like the star. Um, so that's, that's what I was thinking with that. Tear off all the straight edges. Let's see, I think this gold one is gonna come off. I think, I think that'll do. Whoops, gotta get some of that off. There's a little one showing up there that isn't really part of the design. Okay. So there's that one. And then I wanted this one, I think, to go in the little lost angel. I don't know, it just feels like it's kind of got um, a bit of a Nordic design to it. And I don't know, I just think Nordic, probably because of the, pe the uh, papers I picked to go with it. But this isn't Nordic, it's a poinsettia, but it's um, kind of got that same feeling to it when you look at it. Or at least in my mind it does. <laughs> you guys, you're probably like, nope, you are completely nuts. Barking mad, barking. Okay, so anyway, this to me feels Nordic because the poinsettia image mimics those those um, stars that you see, that Nordic design. Okay, so there's that. And then for the story of Christmas, the one with the brown cover. This one doesn't really have much of a focal point, but I like I like the colors. So I think I'm gonna just go over this whole thing with that. Well, maybe not the whole thing. It's supposed to be an accent. Oh, doggy's barking. Man, I um, I ordered something I think on Amazon. So that may be what's coming. Or she could just be barking because there's a van in the neighborhood, a delivery van. Or somebody came home for lunch from school. She does that, she barks at everybody. <laughs> I don't think it's the mailman. One other thing I wanted to Mod Podge is this. This is a time card and I like the green to go in the Littlest Angel with the blues and greens in that. And I wanted to use this napkin. I love these trees, these trees are cool. 
Now I've already removed the backing, all the different backing layers from that, so um, from all these napkins, and so you want to do that before you jump in and decoupage. that one. That's probably too big. I really, I think, I guess I'm going to have to decide if I want the tree or the joy because they're not both going to fit. And I like the tree. Let's see if we can get it separated from the wreath and still have it look good. I like the tree because I think this tree kind of looks like the trees that are in that book. But again, that could just be my imagination. I could be just, you guys may be thinking I'm a little nuts and that's okay. There we go. But I just really like that. Okay, so before I start Mod Podging napkin though, what Rhonda did, and I thought it was really nice looking, was she took music and laid it down. And I like the grunginess of this sheet that I coffee dyed. This is um, him sheets, which by the way, I do have in my store. It says there's two available. If, um, if they sell out and somebody still wants one, I can throw together another pack or two really fast. But um, I have him sheets. I think you get 50. I don't recall. And then I have other music packs in there too. So you have lots of ways to get music. And then also, I was gonna mention, I'm just upselling everything today, not not purposely, but if I don't mention it, you know. <laughs> kinda, I have an obligation to mention this since I, um, since I have it out there, but um, I have, um, you know, affiliate links down below. So I have, I'll have the link for the, for the heat gun and stuff and the glue. I can put in a link for the Mod Podge, although literally you can just go to Walmart or anywhere and buy it or make your own. Like I, I tell you guys this in every video where I use it, but I make my own. So it's two parts, just white all-purpose Elmer's glue to one part water. Two glue, one water. That's how I remember it. So the two and the glue rhyme, so. Yeah, so you can just do that. Especially handy when all this School supplies are on sale. Just get a get a bottle or two of that glue. Okay, so I want these guys to kind of overlap. This pattern doesn't really have a direction, which is super nice. So it's gonna go something like that. And then there's another one. This is Child in the Manger. So I think I want kind of like that title, so that'll probably get used on something. And then, this one's not as dark. I'm wondering if I should use the dark, or will that blend in? Yeah, no, that'll blend in too much. I'll use it, I'll just stick with what I was gonna do. Because you want the pattern to show up, so if it's if the paper behind it is too dark, you can't you can't see it. You know, once you mod podge it, it all melts together. Decoupage, I believe, is the actual. <laughs> the verb is decoupage. The product is mod podge. can hear the um, Michael W. Smith song, Child in the Manger, in my head while I'm looking at that hymn. Okay, so let's 
So there's that. You're gonna go on there. And then one more. I have this one. It's just called Christmas Carol. Came out of an old, an old music book. I have lots of, lots of old music. Lots and lots. I like that this has the bigger, the bigger um, print. It just adds a little bit of a different, different um, look. And on this one, we're gonna keep the title, and hopefully that's not too wide for the bag. Okay, it is, unfortunately. And this one ends right there, so that's where we're gonna tear it. There's that, and then this is gonna be like so. Okay, so let's start gluing. It's amazing how quickly the time goes. But I really have to watch my time because I have this bad habit of wanting to add to the time when I'm recording and then I get done it's, you know, over an hour <laughs> because I keep extending the timer. So I just need to be a little more expedient. Um, yeah, because then they're longer to edit, longer to upload, longer everything, longer for you to watch. So... I gave myself plenty of time to do the thing I needed to do. I need to just rest in that fact. I suppose I could have inked this, but it's gonna end up blending into the background. So there's really no point. Other than, like I said, the ink will spread and it'll add a nice effect around the edges. Maybe we'll do that on the last one and see how what we get. Okay, so you can just glue these down. You don't have to Mod Podge. It helps, I think, with the wrinkling if you just glue the base layer down first. So let's go ahead and ink this up and see what we wind up with when we put on the Mod Podge. Lid. There we go. I feel like there's a bajillion things I was supposed to tell you, but I am completely blank on what they are. So, I'm not telling you. <laughs> Once these are all dry, then I can go back around and ink the edges too before I put them in the in the journals. Okay, so there's that, there's that, there's that. I'm not going to put music behind this, I don't think, unless I just do like a little strip or something. strip was that even gonna look good mm. maybe right there maybe I hope so because it's going down now oh I want to remind you too if you have any questions for the Christmas Q&A that I'll be airing between Christmas and New Year's week uh, weeks to go ahead and leave those questions down below, either on this video or the next one, so that I have time to sift through them and answer them, and think about the answers to them. <laughs> so I've already had one person respond, so thank you. And um, that is like really crooked on there. We're gonna go with it. We're just gonna do it, right? Doesn't have to be perfect. In fact, where's the fun in that, right? Okay, so this one, I'm thinking, I know, I'm kind of all over the place, but I just find it easier to lay it down with the glue stick and seal it with the Mod Podge. That way, 
It reduces the wrinkling from the liquid, the wetness of the glue. There we go. Also, I didn't want to have to just go over the entire background with this Mod Podge. It seems like that's more than it really needs. Uh, okay, let's come off of there. Good idea. Good idea. Okay, so these are also going to have a little sparkle to them. Neat. I'll trim that off when it's dry. So there's that. And then, let's see. You are going to go around like so. There we go. I didn't, um, I got a little bit of green border there, so I'm gonna tear that off some more. Okay. Okay, so let's see what happens when this gets wet. And also, this is another thing. You could go out there, you could go out there, go out to my garage. <laughs> you could uh, use the spray sealer to spray it, but I would be very cautious about not sealing that shut. And also when you're putting on the glue, of course, just remember not to accidentally glue your bag shut because that is a major bummer. Very disappointing. Ooh. I like this. So yeah, I'll link Rhonda's video below and you guys can go check that one out too. I like Rhonda. Also, I have, an, I have a strong affection for her. She really doesn't know who I am from anybody, but um, because she also grew up in Idaho. So she doesn't live here anymore. Now she lives in Arkansas. But yeah, she's been around in the junk journal community for a bit. Shall we center that, do you think? Or should we go down to one side? I'm partial down to the one side. I'm getting hungry too, I gotta... I wanna eat before I take my doggie anywhere. She gets so upset when she goes, but she's gonna look so pretty. Plus, she's been chewing her paw again. I remember last time she was doing that, we took her into the vet and she had something. Ingrown toenail or, I don't know, something, so. I want to get her clean before I take her to the vet, but she's kind of high maintenance, and I don't do well with high maintenance. <laughs> House plants, fine china, fussy dogs that chew on their paws. None of it. Okay. Anyway, I, I think I'd like to get her, have her all pretty before I take her into the vet, is what I'm trying to say. She needs some shots anyway, so it wouldn't be just for the paw. Ooh, I like that. I like where we're going with this. Uh, that's gonna get glue on stuff. There we go. Last one. Now I need to wipe that off because it's all wet. Okay. So I think these will also end up with some kind of focal point or saying or label or who knows. This one is kind of blah right now. But I have high hopes for it. <laughs> I believe it has potential. Okay, where's that? I don't know, this feels like a big blob just laying there. I don't know, it needs more interest to the napkin part of it, I think, but maybe not. How about I just, which way's up? Sorry, I'm really overthinking it, I know, I know. Okay, and last but not least, coming dangerously close to the opening of my bag there. There we go. Ooh. So um, again, I'll trim off those little edges after it dries. 
I wonder if it should just have like a piece of cardboard in there to help it dry flat. And it looks like it's not quite, not quite good enough down there. Nice, okay. So boy, I, I have a nice little mess to clean up here, don't I? Okay, I'm gonna set this aside. I'm gonna show you real quick what I have and then I need to move them because they'll be in the way when I try to read. So that's what we have at the moment. Okay, so that was a fun little session. I don't know if you noticed this or not, but while I'm doing this series of journals, I'm not necessarily showing you a progression of steps. I'm just showing you different aspects of the process as they interest me and as um, just a little bit different than what, you know, step by step, here's how you go through. So these are different parts of what is involved in making a journal and I'm just doing the stuff that I think you might find interesting. So I hope you guys are liking that. Okay, so that's what we've got today. Now we're gonna clear this away and read our story. Okay, I didn't realize that we were so close to the end of the section when I quit last time. That would have been nice to know. So I've set my timer and we'll read for a few minutes and maybe we can get through this whole section then in the time. I set it for eight minutes. I hope we don't go quite that long. <laughs> We'll see. It should only take us about five minutes to read that. We'll see. So also let me know what you've been thinking about uh, reading the series, if you've been enjoying it or if you have other books in mind. Anyway, that, it's been fun. I like it. It's getting us in the Christmas spirit. Okay, here we go. Okay, so Arben has presented his plan to everybody that he was going to follow the star. And one by one, everybody's given him their reasons and they've left. The reasons why they cannot pursue a messiah a promised child and that's very significant because the theme is the wise man is looking for the promised one the promised king and i don't want to over explain but i mentioned last time there's a parable where jesus talks about being prepared for the coming of the king and at one by one all the people that are invited the king throws a big banquet one by one all the people have excuses why they cannot come and um, the excuses that they give are the ones that these gentlemen gave in the story. So it's it's all got a spiritual um, allegory to it, okay? All right, so one by one, they went out of the azure chamber with its silver stars, and Artaban was left in solitude. He gathered up the jewels and replaced them in his girdle. For a long time, he stood and watched the flame that flickered and sank upon the altar. Then he crossed the hall lifted the heavy curtain, and passed out between the dull red pillars of porphyry to the terrace on the roof. The shiver that thrills through the earth ere she rouses from her night's sleep had already begun, and the cool wind that heralds the daybreak was drawing downward from the lofty, snow-traced ravines of Mount Orontes. Birds, half-awakened, crept and chirped among the rustling leaves, and the smell of ripened grapes came in brief wafts from the arbors. Far over the eastern plain, a white mist stretched like a lake, but where the distant peak of Zagros serrated the western horizon, the sky was clear. Jupiter and Saturn rolled together like drops of lambent flame about to blend into one. As Artaban watched them, behold, an azure spark was born out of the darkness beneath, rounding itself with purple splendors to a crimson sphere and spiring upward through rays of saffron and orange into a point of white radiance. Tiny and infinitely remote, yet perfect in every part, yet pulsated in the enormous vault as if the three jewels in the, mag in the Magian's breast had mingled and been transformed into a living heart of light. He bowed his head, he covered his brow with his hands. It is the sign, he said, the king is coming and I will go to meet him. Section two, by the waters of Babylon. All night long, Vazda, the swiftest of Artaban's horses, had been waiting, saddled and bridled in her stall, pawing the ground impatiently and shaking her bit as if she shared the eagerness of her master's purpose, though she knew not its meaning. Before the birds had fully roused to their strong, high, joyful chant of morning song, before the white mist had begun to lift lazily from the plain, the other wise man was in the saddle, riding swiftly along the high road which skirted the base of Mount Orontes westward. 
How close, how intimate is the comradeship between a man and his favorite horse on a long journey? It is a silent, comprehensive friendship, an intercourse beyond the need of words. They drink at the same wayside spring and sleep under the same guardian stars. They are conscious together of the subduing spell of nightfall and the quickening joy of daybreak. The master shares his evening meal with his hungry companion and feels the soft, moist lips caressing the palm of his hand as they close over the morsel of bread. In the gray dawn, he is roused from his bivouac by the gentle stir of a warm, sweet breath over his sleeping face and looks up into the eyes of his faithful fellow traveler, ready and waiting for the toil of the day. That made me giggle because that is exactly what my dog does. She wakens me from my bivouac with her sweet breath over my sleeping face. <laughs> Sorry. Surely, unless he is a pagan and an unbeliever, by whatever name he calls upon his God, he will thank him for this voiceless sympathy, this dumb affection, and his morning prayer will embrace a double blessing. God bless us both and keep our feet from falling and our souls from death. And then, through the keen morning air, the swift hoofs beat their spirited music along the road, keeping time to the pulsing of two hearts that are moved to the same eager desire to conquer space, to devour the distance, to attain the goal of the journey. Artaban must indeed ride wisely and well if he would keep the appointed hour with the other magi, for the route was 150 parasangs, and 15 was the utmost he could travel in a day. But he knew Vazda's strength and pushed forward without anxiety, making the fixed distance every day, though he must travel late into the night and in the morning long before sunrise. He passed along the brown slopes of Mount Orontes, furrowed by the rocky courses of a hundred torrents. He crossed the level plains of the Nysaeans, where the famous herds of horses, feeding in the wide pastures, tossed their heads at Vazda's approach and galloped away with a thunder of many hoofs, and flocks of wild birds rose suddenly from the swampy meadows, wheeling in great circles with a shining flutter of innumerable wings and shrill cries of surprise. He traversed the fertile fields of Concobar, where the dust from the threshing floors filled the air with a golden mist, half hiding the huge temple of Astarte with its 400 pillars. At Bagistan, among the rich gardens, watered by fountains from the rock, he looked up at the mountain, thrusting its immense rugged brow out over the road, and saw the figure of King Darius trampling upon his fallen foes, and the proud list of his wars and conquests graven high upon the face of the eternal cliff. Over many a cold and desolate pass, crawling painfully across the windswept shoulders of the hills, down many a black mountain gorge where the river roared and raced before him like a savage guide, across many a smiling vale with terraces of yellow limestone full of vines and fruit trees, through the oak groves of Kareen and the dark gates of Zagros, walled in by the precipices, into the ancient city of Chala, where the people of Samaria had been kept in captivity long ago, and out again by the mighty portal, riven through the encircling hills, where he saw the image of the high priest of the Magi, sculptured on the wall of rock, with hand uplifted as if to bless the centuries of pilgrims. Past the entrance of the narrow defile, filled from end to end with orchards of peaches and figs, through which the river Gindes foamed down to meet him, over the broad rice fields where the autumnal vapors spread their deathly mists, following along the course of the river under the tremulous shadows of poplar and tamarind among the lower hills, and out upon the flat plain where the road ran straight as an arrow through the stubble fields and parched meadows, past the city of Stesiphon, where the Parthian emperors ranged, and the vast metropolis of Seleucia, which Alexander built, across the swirling floods of Tigris and the many channels of Euphrates, flowing yellow through the cornlands, Artaban pressed onward until he arrived at nightfall of the tenth day beneath the shattered walls of populous Babylon. Vasta was almost spent, and he would gladly have turned into the city to find rest and refreshment for himself and for her. But he knew that it was three hours' journey yet to the Temple of the Seven Spheres, and he must reach the place by midnight if he would find his comrades waiting. So he did not halt, but rode steadily across the stubble fields. A grove of date palms made an island of gloom in the pale yellow sea. As she passed into the shadow, Vazda slackened her pace and began to pick her way more carefully. 
Near the farther end of the darkness, an access of caution seemed to fall upon her. She scented some danger or difficulty. It was not in her heart to fly from it, only to be prepared for it and to meet it wisely as a good horse should do. The grove was close and silent as the tomb. Not a leaf rustled, not a bird sang. She felt her steps before her delicately, carrying her head low and sighing now and then with apprehension. At last, she gave a quick breath of anxiety and dismay and stood stock still, quivering in every muscle before a dark object in the shadow of the last palm tree. Well, we almost made it, so, okay. Right here, so when he gets off his horse, that's where we'll finish, well, that's where we'll start again. So now we have to figure out what she is, um, why she stopped, what did she see, what's going on there? That was quite the description of the topography and the geography that he was galloping through. I find that really interesting. Very uh, poetic and it really brings a lot of imagery to mind. Before I go ahead and close out, I wanted to uh, just remind one more time, Kathy Lesage, you were the winner of my flash giveaway. You won these three lovely books in last Friday's video where we did the drawing, and I still haven't heard from you as of the recording of this video. So if you could go ahead and contact me at my email address, I'll put it down below one more time, and go ahead and let me know your address, then I will mail these out to you. Can't wait to get them to you so you can start working on your own Christmas journals or maybe get a head start even on next year's if this year's are done. Okay guys, that wraps up another session together. I'm just always excited when we can get together and just have fun creating. So until next time, I want you to be inspired and do something creative today. I will talk to you in the next video. Bye-bye.